Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. I'm going to now talk about how to use the Paul Bay diagram to predict reactions between different systems, to predict relative stabilities. In order to do this, we'll need two diagrams and we'll need to superpose them. So here's the example. We have an iron water system superposed on top of an acetine AS3 system. The iron system is shown with solid boundaries around the species. There's a zero line here, which is a bit confusing, but we otherwise we have solid lines delineating the stable iron regions and delineating the stable acetine regions are these dotted lines. Now you can see the slope is a little bit uh, different slope here, different line here, different slope. So there's actually more complexity in this acetine um, Paul Bay diagram than it's actually shown. But the key thing to note is above here we have AS5 type species of different forms and here we have AS3 type species of different forms. Likewise here we have an iron 2 species and another iron oxide iron 2 species here and here. And in this case they're delineated in the iron Paul Bay diagram. Now how do we tell uh, which species is more stable? Uh, we use the rule before, which is the higher the E value, the lower the delta G. So when we're above this line, uh, this is where AS AS5 is more stable. Uh, below this line, AS3 is more stable. So this is the stability field of AS5 and AS3. Now, will it react with the 9 system and what will happen? In order to tell that, I'm going to see where the dotted line for one of the systems intersects the solid line in the Paul Bay diagram of the other. And here are the two intersection points. In fact, it's an intersection line between Fe3 plus here and this AS type line over here. Now what's important is the Fe3 plus line in this region lies above this AS3 region. And similarly here, the iron line over here, this is iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus, lies above the AS3, AS5. When we have that situation, we can say that iron 3 plus being more stable has the capability of forcing AS3 to become AS5. Iron 3, which lies above the topmost, has the capability of forcing the lower quantity species AS3 to become AS5. Let's have a look at this diagram to see what I mean. So here is a particular pink line which lies in this hashed region before pH 5.5 where iron 3 is above that dotted line. And it, here we have a particular value in blue on the astatine line 0 0.45. That means that at this particular pH uh, the reaction from AS3 to AS5 is 0 0.45. And likewise the E value for Fe2 plus going to FeOH3 uh, or maybe the reverse is 0 0.65 if that's a reduction reaction. So here the reaction is written Fe3 plus as uh, iron oxide plus an electron goes to Fe2 plus 0 0.65 that's the green point and we have AS3 plus going to AS5 plus uh, sorry, AS5 plus plus two electrons going to AS3 plus is 0 0.45. Reverse that, we get minus 0 0.45. When we add those two together, we get a net reaction with an E0 value of 0 0.2. This is a favorable reaction. So iron goes from iron 3 plus to 2 plus, and it forces the one lower, which is iron 3, sorry, astatine 3 to astatine 5. So the higher of the upper pair, has the capability of forcing the lower of the lower pair to run backwards. And that's the meaning of this diagram. So that's cool. In these overlapping regions of the Paul Bay diagram, you can tell whether or not a chemical reaction will occur. And you can tell at what pH it will occur. Likewise, um, if we consider this region here, which is exactly the opposite region, the dotted line for the AS3, AS5 lies above the combination of this iron 2 plus line, aqueous, and FeOH2 uh, aqueous line. So in this case, the exact reverse 
applies. Um, here AS5, uh, sorry, AS3 going to AS5 has the capability of forcing um, iron, uh, iron 2 plus to go to iron OH3, exactly the opposite reaction. So in here, iron acetine 5 plus will oxidize iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus in this FeOH3 region. So it's as simple as that. Now we'll do a few practice exercises in class about that. See you later.